Hello and welcome. In this video, we will provide an overview of the key components of an autoencoder, as well as the applications that an autoencoder is suited for. An autoencoder, also known as an autoassociator or Diablo network, is an artificial neural network used to recreate a given input. It takes a set of unlabeled inputs, and after encoding them, it tries to extract the most valuable information. Autoencoders are used for feature extraction, learning generative models of data, dimensionality reduction, and even compression. A 2006 paper showed better results than years of refining other types of networks. So this was a breakthrough in the field of neural networks, which was stagnant for 10 years. Autoencoders are based on restricted Boltzmann machines, and they were employed in some of the largest deep learning applications. They are also used as the building blocks of deep belief networks. As an example, let's say that you want to extract the feeling or emotion of a person in a photograph. This is a small image that's just 256 by 256 pixels. But this means that the dimension of the input is over 65,000. As we increase the dimensionality, the time to train and fit our neural network increases exponentially. So, we need a way to extract the most important features of a face. An autoencoder works well for this type of problem. An autoencoder can be divided into two parts, the encoder and the decoder. The encoder needs to compress the representation of an input. In this case, we are going to compress the face of our actor, moving from 2,000 dimensional data to only 30 dimensions. The decoder is a reflection of the encoder network. It works to recreate the input as accurately as it can. It has an important role during training, and that is to force the autoencoder to select the most important features in the compressed representation. After the training is complete, you can use the encoded data that has been dimensionally reduced for the application of your choosing. This image compares a two-dimensional reduction for 500 data points of MNIST, a database of handwritten digits. The left plot was generated by principal component analysis, and the right plot was generated by an autoencoder. You can see that the autoencoder provided us with a better separation of data. An autoencoder uses a loss function to properly train the network. It then uses gradient descent to reach the local minimum of the function. You can use different functions for binary values and real values. Please review this notebook for a more in-depth explanation of these formulas. By now, you should understand the basic structure of an autoencoder, as well as the benefits that an autoencoder provides to different applications. Thank you for watching this video. To practice and learn more, go to the lab and run the code for yourself.